How do I set a timeout in a Jenkins pipeline? Many pipelines can take a while to run to completion. However, a poorly written pipeline can waste resources on a controller. Worse yet, if there are many poorly written pipelines on a controller, it could starve a controller of all resources. In this video, we're going to look at a couple of different ways that you can use timeouts within a Jenkins pipeline to help make sure that you are not one of those contributors to wasting resources. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.303.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. In this video, we're going to be using a sample repository. The link to this sample repository is down in the description. So let's take a look at Jenkins file one. And this Jenkins file is based on one of the Jenkins files that was from the what is an input in Jenkins video, which is also linked down in the description or also up here. And what we have here is an input and steps. So let's see what this looks like when we run it. Right now we have no timeout set. So let's go ahead and set up a job called Jenkins example timeout. And we'll say pipeline, click OK. Let's change this to pipeline script from SCM. Get, paste in our URL, change our branch to main, and then Jenkins file dash one. Let's click on save. Now when we click on build now, what we're going to see is that we have an input requested. And if we don't do anything, then it's just going to sit here and wait and wait and wait. There is no timeout by default for an input. Now, fortunately, the way that this Jenkins file is written, it is not wasting any of our executors. So at this point, we can safely go and stop this job because unless we answer it, nothing happens. So we'll go ahead and just stop the job. Now let's go take a look at Jenkins file two. So if we take a look at Jenkins file two, we have the exact same pipeline, except we have added in an options block within the stage to time out after 10 seconds. So let's go and modify our job to use Jenkins file two. Okay, click on that, click on build now. Now, if we go back over to build number two, we have an input is requested and it's going to time out after 10 seconds. And we can see that it's been rejected by system, finish aborted. So if we take a look now here, we've had both of these abort, but instead of having to manually go and abort the job by using the timeout option, we timed it out after 10 seconds. And we can see that here even though it's really small, we can see that it was paused for 10 seconds. Now let's go back over and take a look at Jenkins file three. So in Jenkins file three, what we're doing is we're adding in a different option block. So we still have our option timeout down here under the stage at 10 seconds, but now we're setting up an option block for seven seconds at the global level. What do you think is going to happen? Let's go and modify our job and see what really happens. We click on configure, change this to Jenkins file three, click on save, click on build now. What we're going to see here momentarily is now job run three is running and we see two timeouts set to expire, one for seven seconds, one for 10 seconds, and then it was canceled due to the timeout. Now you might be asking, okay, which timeout really took effect? The shortest answer is that since the timeout value for global was set to a shorter amount than the stage, the global amount wins. So if we were to take a look at pipeline steps, what we can see here is that an enforced time limit was set for seven seconds at the global level. And therefore the input only had seven seconds to complete. Now let's go take a look at the last case. We go take a look at Jenkins file four. What we've done is we've modified our global timeout to be 30 seconds, so greater than 10 seconds on the stage. So we're gonna give the whole pipeline 30 seconds to timeout, 
but we're only going to give the stage 10 seconds to time out. So if we come back over here, in fact, let's go back and take a look at the number three run. What we can see here is this pause for basically six seconds. So six, seven seconds in that ballpark, not 10 seconds. Let's modify our job and do Jenkins file four. Click save, click on build now. If we take a look at build run four, we've set the timeout to expire in 30 seconds. That's the global level. We've set the stage to expire in 10 seconds and that timed out for us before we could even finish up and type in our input. So let's go and run this job one more time. And as we start it up, we'll go over to build number five. We'll click on our input. We'll say submit, yes, Dave. It ran on the agent because of how we have it written. It says, good morning, Dave. Then it cats out some information from our agent and then it's done. So we were able to get the input in within 10 seconds, but the rest of the job completed before the 30 second timeout expired. What are some other ways to use timeout? Well, as we've seen, even if we've written our input steps just correctly to where we are not using any executors anywhere, the job is still running and is taking up some resources on the controller. So inputs should always have timeouts. Another reason to use a timeout is to be able to warn you of abnormal processing times. Let's assume for a moment you have a job and typically it runs in about five minutes. So you go and set a global timeout on that job to maybe eight, nine, 10 minutes, maybe time and a half, two times, whatever your normal runtime is to allow for some margin of error. That way, if the job doesn't complete in that eight, nine or 10 minutes, the job will be aborted. And then the job through a post action can send a notification, an email, a Slack notification to you to let you know that that job failed and was outside your time tolerance levels. Now, just because it ran longer doesn't mean that your timeout was actually bad. Your job that used to run in five minutes over time has now expanded to run in 10 minutes or maybe 11 minutes. So at that point, you would need to update your Jenkins file to adjust that global timeout from whatever it was from five minutes, 10 minutes to something a little bit longer to be able to support the new actual run times. However, if that's not the case, and really your job still only takes five minutes, you're going to be able to act more quickly on that failure, that timeout, instead of waiting around for a notification the next morning when somebody says, hey, what happened with the belt? If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.